All right, so it's been a while since we did a wash cast, right? It's been probably about a month. But in this video, we're going to be entirely talking about Japan and my trip there. Again, if you guys followed me on Instagram, you guys saw my stories, you saw my reels. I was there for about uh, two weeks, had such amazing time. And I really think this wash cast um, is a lot to talk about. And I'm gonna give you guys some tips that I realized when traveling there. And also some travel tips, because if you guys are really thinking about going to this wonderful country of Japan, then this may save you some headaches, some money, and also make you maximize your time there. And if you guys are new to the channel, just to give you an idea, my channel is a automotive channel based on BMW content. Um, and as you can see behind me, we're gonna be washing my 2022 G80 M3. And I like to do it in the garage. There is a taboo thing of you shouldn't, you should. It doesn't matter because <clears throat> I do have a dehumidifier that I'll run after the fact. I also have a concrete squeegee, which I'm gonna show you um, maybe later on and how I keep the garage clean. And also this actually helps clean the garage floor because all the soap, when I squeegee it out, it kind of gives it a nice uh, dusting, right? But um, right now we're gonna be washing the wheels and that's another elephant in the room, right? If you guys have seen my other videos, you haven't really seen why I have these wheels on, but just know these are not forever and we'll leave it as that. And if the team over at Gianna is watching this, I definitely ran out of your wheel cleaner. Um, it's really good stuff and I used it all up. I do wanna mention everything I'm using in this video, I'm gonna list it down in the description, whether it's wheel cleaning products, pressure washers, uh, the water squeegee, dehumidifier, all that stuff. So one key tip if you're washing in the garage, again, I have a three car garage. Um, I'm washing away from that wall. And as I spray this area later, I'm gonna angle it to a point where it's not splashing against the wall. Um, I'm not really too worried about humidity because it is very humid in Florida, which is why we're gonna run the dehumidifier later on. All right, so we're gonna be talking about Japan, all right? Japan, like I said, we were there for two weeks. And just to give you a little backstory, right? Japan has been a trip that I've been waiting for a long time. And when I really mean waiting for, you guys are probably in the same situation where You've always seen like these food documentaries, whether it's from Anthony Bourdain, uh, and Andrew Zimmerman, and a whole bunch of other people, right? You always see all these highlights of this amazing country. And I fell in love with watching these highlights, seeing what type of culture they come up with, right? Or what, what they're all about. And I'll give you a interpretation of what I felt when I was there throughout the video but it's been a trip that we've been planning for a long time. Give you guys some context, right? Um, my wife and I, we've been planning this before we even got married. Um, we had a trip planned out where we were actually gonna take our engagement photos in Japan, and um, we all went through a very unique period of time, and that very unique period of time was in 2020. And if I put those two things together, you guys have an idea. So back in 2020, the whole world was going through this, right? And this was like 2020 March, the US decided to close the borders with Europe. And at that time, we had a trip planned out probably eight months prior, and we had everything booked. I think we had about 10 days that we're gonna to go to Japan. And right after the US closed the borders with Europe, I was thinking, we're gonna to have to cancel our trip because I don't wanna to go to a country and have the worry of not being able to make it back home or having issues coming back home. To be honest, actually, I really didn't care. <laughs> I actually wanted to go, my wife was like, no, we can't go, there's no point. And at that time, we had no idea what we were looking at. So we, we had to cancel our trip. I was 
absolutely devastated because again, it was a country that I was looking forward to for so long. Um, so fast forward to October of 2021, as the world became to, became to uh, recover. And, um, and we all know Japan has been very strict with their uh, immigration because of this time period. And what happened was in October 2021, they opened their borders to be a little bit more less restrictive. Um, you should check every single time you get into a country, especially during these times, if what type of regulations they have, what their uh, immigration laws are. I know for, as of right now, we're in the middle of March. Actually, no, we're the end of March. And right now, all you need to enter into Japan from the United States is to be triple vaccinated. If you choose not to be triple vaccinated, um, you just need to have a negative PCR test. All right, before you guys freak out, this is the concrete squeegee I was talking about. As you can see, the floor is wet, and what it does, it makes the floor not wet. So obviously there's a little bit slight moisture on there, which is why I have the dehumidifier. That is how I'm gonna keep the floors nice and clean and also keep the floors uh, not damaged. Again, we're just using water and you really need to think about it is that when it rains outside and you bring the car soaking wet, yeah, you're still gonna get moisture in, in the garage, but it's not gonna do any damage. So what I should do is get the floor coated, but I don't know, we'll see. I thought about Swiss tracks, but then at Swiss tracks, I really can't do this in the garage at that point because you can't really squeegee at that point. Yeah, so all you really need was a negative PCR test or to be triple vaccinated. Um, just know if you're getting a negative PCR test, you really need to figure out a specific PCR test that they need. Um, they are strict with that stuff, you know, because they are the government and they do need to make sure they follow their protocols. But there's a specific PCR test that needs to be done. Um, I've heard of some headaches on these Facebook groups where people travel to Japan and they were talking about it. So, you know, obviously it could change. When you're watching this video, it could be a week from now, it could be two months from now, it could also be a year from now. So you just need to figure out, um, do your homework and figure out which is gonna be the best solution and um, the proper way to do it. So what I did too also that you'll see in a future vlog, and if you guys followed my story, I vlogged, I vlogged in Japan. And when I first started the vlogs, you have to realize that my channel is, like I said, an automotive based channel based on BMW content. And sometimes I throw in some other builds here and there. So being able to do, do what travel vloggers do, it wasn't as easy as you think. And it was something that I had to get used to as a content creator and as a person that was trying to do my best, because you know me, I like to do high quality videos and I want to take you guys along, right? So I did, I did vlog when I was there. I think we're gonna have a, a day of all day eating vlog, which I always enjoy watching those because I am a fat kid at heart. Um, and we also did a video with two BMW enthusiasts and they are, I'm telling you guys what to expect, right? So these are the videos that are coming up. We have two BMW enthusiasts and they have F80s. And I gotta say, these cars were absolutely gorgeous seeing in person. And you'll, you'll see it, it'll be a good vlog. Uh, one of the most interesting parts about that vlog is gonna be these F80 owners didn't speak any English. So we use the handy uh, tool of Google Translate, which is something that it's, it's a very good tool to use, especially when uh, when you go to a country like that and you don't understand the language, and we could talk about that later on. But what was really amazing was being able to actually meet one of the owners or co-founders of 3D Design. 3D Design, if you guys hear that name, you guys already know, it's a high quality carbon fiber accessory company. And I didn't really know they made performance parts too. So 
uh, in that vlog, we get to walk around their facility, talk to the owner, and get a little more information about what they do and product wise. Um, and that was such a great time. All right, so we are here in Kyoto. We're having a great time. I'm interrupting this portion of the video to actually say something about one of our sponsors. As you can see, this bag here is actually from ADD Solutions. I've been using this bag to carry all my equipment, my snacks, because going up that hill um, to, to these shrines is a long walk. You need a lot of snacks and also a lot of camera equipment. So I'm gonna thank them for sponsoring this video and uh, providing me with this bag itself. I'm gonna leave the discount code down below. It's gonna get you multiple percent off and you could save yourself some money to buy some more mods. Again, I wanna thank the team over there for sending me this bag. Um, and let's continue with the rest of the video. And one reason why I'm doing this in the garage is because you never wanna wash your car outside in the hot sun. You don't want water etching, water dries on the car. It could cause the infamous water spots. Sure, I could get a water softener, but you may still have some opportunities of having those water spots. And also, it's just too damn hot. It's, it's the end of March and everybody, it's gonna be 90 degrees today. So I'm keeping it in the garage. Again, you could definitely do it in the garage as long as you have enough ample space and also have the right tools. So I know a lot of you guys that clicked onto this video, you wanna hear more about Japan, right? And I, I could talk about this for hours and I could tell you that if you're planning a trip there and you're eager to go, it's worth the wait and it is absolutely all the hype. So my wife and I, we planned a two week trip to Japan. What I will say, which was one of the most satisfying things to do is being able to save a lot of money, right? And what I mean save a lot of money is because there's a way of saving money when traveling. One of the best ways you could do is utilizing your credit card points. I am not a travel vlogger, I'm not a financial analyst or a financial advisor, so you could do as what you want, but this is what we did. And sometimes leaving these you know, examples of what we did could help you, I guess, analyze and also save some money too. So what we did was, I'm a big fan of taking advantage of the credit card companies instead of having them take advantage of me. So we were able to utilize our American Express points to book our flights. An average flight now to uh, Japan is gonna be about 2,000, on, I would say on the roughly low end round trip flights for each person, up to almost $3,500. So you could do the math. I think when we went, it was about $2,200 maybe $2,500 um, roughly each. So you're looking at about $5,000 in savings right there. And out of the 14 days, we had credit card points to pay for our hotels. And I didn't pay for every single thing with credit card points. I did use um, about seven of those 14 days with credit card points. And on average, each day will roughly be about 150 to about $250. Uh, there's some days where we stayed at a really nice hotel, which we did that in the beginning because we were so anxious and I was like, why not? You know, it worked a ton, so I could, we, we would be able to enjoy it. If you did the math, let's say, let's say an estimate of $200, right? Each night for seven days, that's $1,400. I'm already saving about $6,400 and change. Right, so that's based on my credit card. And just to give you guys an idea, utilizing your debit cards and all that stuff, it's not really gonna give you any points. It's nothing, you're not making your purchases work for you. For example, American Express, right? I think a lot of our biggest expense besides our mortgage, car payments, if you guys rent, it could be your rent. So obviously my top five would be my mortgage, my car payment, and then one of the next biggest expense for me is food. I love eating, and you guys have watched my Instagram stories, you definitely see that. Um, we like to go to different unique places. We're big food people, you know? So, so one of the cards that I utilize and um, that might be a good option for you is actually the gold card. 
the American Express Gold Card. And just to leave it out there, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. Um, kind of wish I was, but I'm not. But again, so the gold card is something where I utilize, right? Because every dollar you spend on groceries or at restaurants, you get four points. That's a big difference, right? Because normally when you use a credit card now, sometimes when you use it for groceries and other places, you get double the points. Maybe you get a 2% cash back, maybe five, you know, depends on which brand of, of or what company. But I'm more into the points because I accumulated those points pretty quickly and because they give you a sign-in bonus, right? You basically open the credit card, you spend X amount of dollars within that four month period or three month period, and then you get that sign-in bonus. It's just basically an incentive for you to spend money. And if you're not gonna be able to spend that money in that time period, then you should really ask yourself, is it worth it? Probably not. If you could find people where you could spend some of their expenses on and they give you the cash up front, That'd be something that you could do too. So the gold card was something I utilized, right, to build those points. I also had the platinum card. There's pros and cons with the platinum card. Uh, one pro is that you get to use all these lounges and you know enjoy the benefits of that. You have a lot of different purchase protections and all that stuff, travel insurance. But you should definitely pick pick your own travel insurance, just in case. Another reason why I'm filming in here too, as you can see, it's kind of noisy outside. People are doing some lawn work and I just like the more privacy inside the garage where I'm able to film and also speak my mind. So I have a platinum card, right? When I first signed up, they offered me 80,000 points if you were to spend So they gave me 80,000 points if we were to spend X amount of dollars. I did that. Um, and I got those points. I saved up those points. Obviously, we had a wedding, so we had a lot of expenses too. And we utilized those points. I'm telling you, like, it was such a great time being able to save upfront almost $6,500, if not maybe more. And we were able to have a really good time. And what I mean have a good time is that you'll see in the vlogs that we were able to eat these wonderful, amazing food and to experience the culture. So if you're probably wondering how long is the flight, the flight's gonna be long. Um, luckily over here, it was broken up a little bit, so we flew Delta and we had Comfort Plus, nothing crazy, right? A little more leg room, um, same, same food as most everybody else does besides uh, the people in the front of the plane. Uh, the food was okay, it was actually pretty trashy. <laughs> um, but yeah, going into the flight, it was a flight to from Florida to uh, Atlanta Airport. And from Atlanta Airport, we took a straight flight all the way across to Haneda International Airport, which was a 14 half hour flight. That was about two hours to Atlanta from Florida. And it wasn't bad. Um, what it was, what it helped out that it wasn't bad is because I was just so anxious and ready to go there and ready to, um, experience the things I've seen on people's other videos because I watched a lot of uh, YouTubers, right, where they're travel vloggers or food vloggers and they were able to showcase what they did in some of the highly recommended restaurants. And I gotta say, all those highly recommended restaurants was, there's a long line and we'll talk about that later. All right, so we're gonna be rinsing the car off, but you'll see as I get closer to the walls and stuff, I'll angle it to a way where I'm not really shooting directly into the wall. But um, let's rinse the car off. only area I'm okay with getting wet is actually the garage door. Everything else I try to stay away from.
Another way you could do it too is actually, you could open the garage door and actually park the car if you have enough shade, right? You can park the car somewhat outside and you can have a little more room to the front and back. And when we went to Japan, it was, I guess you could say it was the high season because everybody's starting to travel there because again, this country was closed off for quite a bit, right? It was closed off from the world for almost three years. But now I've been looking at these Facebook groups where people are traveling to Japan and people are waiting online for customs and their health documentation process, you know, where you show your health documents to the government there or the admin there. People are stuck on these lines for almost an hour and a half to almost three hours. Um, when we went through the whole process in Haneda Airport, we were done with the process in less than a half an hour. So we went in and out pretty quickly. Everybody on these Facebook groups are pretty helpful, right? Answering questions and helping each other out. Um, but when we got there, you know, obviously I thought ahead, right? One of the issues that I thought about was how was I going to travel there and have internet, right? Sure, I could pay my cell phone provider, uh, whatever their international plan is. T-Mobile actually offers international texting with no additional charge with their plans, along with, I believe, um, some internet. But their internet is super slow, nothing that I really wanted to utilize. So I found a company, right? It's called Ninja Wi-Fi. How ironic, right? A Japan Ninja and stuff. But this company actually, I believe we paid for a 17 day or whatever day plan. It was almost like two weeks plus. And it was like 60 something dollars. And with taxes and fees, it was like $70, maybe less than $70. And that's a Wi-Fi hotspot. The Wi-Fi hotspot looks like a external battery pack, mini external battery pack. Super small, they give you a kit, you type in the password to your phone and you're able to log on. That was super reliable. I had no problems connecting to the internet, the Wi-Fi was good for myself and also my wife. Because if you really think about it, if you were to purchase, um, I think T-Mobile was charging $10 a day per line for international plans, and if you're bringing a significant other, you, know, you guys know you definitely want your own plans because you want to surf the web, you know, post up on your social media if you want, and all those things, right? So if you really think about that, that would have been for 14 days, um, it would have been $140, right? Plus fees and taxes, you know? So you're looking at almost $280 plus just for two lines to have all that features. I paid $70 just to have internet because really didn't care about you know, having the option of calling, right? Because that is not really covered. But you have other phone apps, right? You could still talk on Instagram for video chats. Um, you could still utilize WhatsApp and, and not have to pay that calling fee. Because when you call internationally, uh, you're paying a lot if you don't have that plan. So I'll leave their information down below. I have no affiliation with them. So again, I'm just telling you what worked for me and maybe something that you could utilize. But Ninja Wi-Fi, even, I was kind of skeptical, right? When I was going there, I was like, is this really gonna work? The name sounds kind of like, you know, um, childish, right? But literally, we're on top of these shrines, and some of these shrines you have to walk, like, miles to get to, and you're on top of a mountain. And they had no, I had no problems. There was no problems. I had ample service. I think we had speeds about almost 4G, almost, yeah, 4G service, which is still really good. I think one of the questions asked is traveling to Japan economical? It could be, right? You don't have to get the most expensive flights. You could get the most basic flights. You could book early in advance. A trip is still going to cost you for, say, if you did about 14 days. You could do Airbnbs. You could do... Um, capsule hotels, which we're really not going to get into this this uh, video because I didn't try it. I can't really give you guys an idea of it. A trip like this, 14 days, would probably cost you about, if you are budgeting really hardcore and all that stuff, maybe like six grand for two people. So you really need to think about it. So when I'm talking about this amazing country, Japan, there's probably three words where I could really summarize this amazing country. And we're gonna start with it. Respect, culture, and food. 
And when you go there, you know, people always talk about how the culture there, right? The culture there. I think a lot of it has to do with some of the respect, right? The respect aspect of their culture is when you see it, you're in that realm. It is absolutely amazing to see. Um, coming from New York, living here in South Florida, sure people respect, right? They have that, but I'm telling you it's on a different level. And one good example too, which kind of goes into um, their, their culture is that everywhere we went, whether it's a shopping plaza, a supermarket, or a restaurant, people always showed them utmost respect, right? They greeted you, they greeted you with a smile, they, um, you know, obviously sometimes we would be lost on directions of where we wanted to go or where we wanted to eat. They were super helpful. So one good example of the respect culture, right? When you walk onto a train, and as cliche as it sounds, and I've heard this and also saw this on other vlogs, people don't talk. It's not, it's not, it's taboo to really talk loudly on the train because in their culture is to be able to disturb other people around you is disrespectful and it's something that's uh, frowned upon. Everyone's focusing on what they need to do. They're looking at their newspaper or looking at their phone and they're not worrying about other things. They're not talking loudly. If people are having conversations, they're pretty much whispering. Um, I know there was times where my wife was talking loudly. I'm like, hunch. But um, there was times where I felt bad of talking, right? Because it was so quiet that I actually texted her <laughs> what I was thinking or what I wanted to say. Just because I'm a found believer, when you go to somebody's country or these countries, you don't want to be that person or that guy or that girl. Um, you kind of want to be able to respect their culture and kind of adopt, adapt it so you're, not, so you're not causing too much of a ruckus. That's how I felt. Um, was there a lot of pressure to, to feel that way? No, not really. Going back into the respect thing, right? One thing that was pretty cool to see was how respectful people were to each other, right? And also, there was one time where we were actually waiting to go up to um, Shibuya Sky or Sky Shibuya, right? Which is basically a viewing area where you can see the famous Shinjuku crossing. So we were there waiting online, and I saw this guy, and this guy exited the office, right? Closed the door and bowed. It was pretty cool to see. Hopefully somebody doing guarding outside, not too loud for the video, but yeah, it was pretty cool to see. It was, it was the fact that this guy had so much gratitude and this guy had so much um, respect um, that he bowed, and it's part of their culture. Being able to see that and actually experience that in person, it was a good time. You know, it was good to see because you don't have this here. <laughs> so the next topic is culture. Japan is a very rich and historic culture. Being able to see these shrines, and I'm talking about these shrines are absolutely amazing. Um, I believe some of these shrines that we've been to, they were burned down during some of their wars and they were renovated to what it resembled back then. So it's pretty cool to see, pretty cool to see the history of it. I'm a big history guy, I love history. So in that Japan vlog, you'll see a lot of the culture I'm talking about, the history, um, how people are. One thing that can save you some headaches is that absolutely change currency um, before traveling there. Uh, Japan is still a cash dominated society there's some vendors where these small businesses don't take electronic payments or credit cards, right? And all they take is cash. So you don't want to be that person when you get to line or when you're about to pay and they say cash only. Meanwhile, they set it on the outside of their store or restaurant. So definitely, big thing, take cash with you. All right, so the car is completely washed. We're going to rinse the car off. And then we're gonna dry the car off and just finish up this vlog. So I'm actually really excited about editing the Japan vlogs. I can't wait. It's gonna be a fun time for me to edit and also to relive those moments. Well, one thing to note, Japan still utilizes face masks. You'll see in my vlogs that I will be wearing a mask in certain portions of it. Um, Japan, you still need to wear a mask 
um, when I was there, when you're inside the buildings. Um, outside, it wasn't necessary, so that was, was um, loosened on their regulations. I think it might have changed now where it's suggested that you need to wear a mask. And um, I heard later this spring or late spring or early summer, they're actually gonna be taking a lot of the COVID, COVID regulations out. So if you guys didn't really follow me on Instagram throughout the whole trip, you, if you did, you get to understand that I had an absolute amazing time eating all the delicious food. Um, one part where I feel like Japan kind of ruined my life here is that it's gonna be tough because every time I eat a piece of sushi or eat some ramen, I'm gonna compare it, I'm gonna compare it to the places I had in Japan. You know, one of the spots that we really enjoyed for ramen was, um, there was many different spots we tried, but one place that we kept on going to is actually a chain. It's called Ichiran Ramen. And it's in major, any, I think there's a decent amount in Japan. There actually is two in New York City and there's been some debates of how it tastes compared to the original ones. But um, I'm telling you, this pork bone broth ramen was so creamy, delicious, and it had a nice umami flavor to it. Um, what I will, I, I do dream about that ramen, it was so good. I actually bought a few packs that were um, made for you know reheating up and to add some water. So I'm gonna try those out and, and, and really relive that moment of eating it there. But the, the food there, was everything what I expected. Watching these videos online, watching these other YouTubers, and seeing them indulge in all this food, it was exactly what I was doing. So I did capture a decent amount of footage, but you also have to keep in mind too, I did, I did want to enjoy the trip. Um, so not everything was captured, but I did my best of my ability to make you feel like you were part of the journey a little bit. I will list in that food vlog all the places I've been to. Um, for the video, but there were so many other good places too that I'll probably list in the description. So something with the food too is that there was nothing in Japan that I had that was bad. You know, there was nothing that was like, oh, I shouldn't have got that. Okay, there was only one thing that I did have that was like, okay, not worth it. And that was actually at Universal Studios. And what I had there was, so what happened was we went into Nintendo World. Super Nintendo World was incredible, right? It was a good time, and here's a, here's a key tip. You need to get there an hour and a half before the park opens, because before the park opens, there's a long line of people waiting to get in. I'm talking about when we went, it was about a 40 minute wait after the park opened, because there were people waiting outside. There's only a certain amount of people allowed into Nintendo World, so which is another reason why you would want to get there early to get the extra ticket. The extra ticket doesn't cost you much, actually it doesn't cost you anything to get into Nintendo World, but they have to regulate how many, how many people are allowed to in, in that portion of the park because it is a popular um, destination or area to see. So my key tip is to obviously purchase your tickets beforehand if you're able to. Um, one travel website we used was Kluk. A lot of people on the Facebook forums recommended it and we were able to purchase our tickets and get a QR code with no problems. When it came to uh, going into Nintendo World, it was good. Um, I will say, if you don't have an express pass for some of these rides and stuff, it's a long way. Like when we went, uh, Japan wasn't at their peak peak season. Their peak season, I would say, was about a week, two weeks ago. Um, that was during the cherry blossom season. Cherry blossoms are these, uh, it's a season where all, everybody goes there just to see these flowers and uh, these flowers on the trees where they bloom, and it actually gives it really good Instagram videos and pictures if you guys are really into that. But when we went, it was packed. That park was packed. I'm telling you, inside, every single line we waited for for food was a minimum of 30 to 40 minutes. So we had to choose wisely, you know, of where we wanted to eat and what snacks we wanted to eat. Um, when it came to the food in the park, the only thing that we had that was bad was actually we waited 40 minutes for some hot dogs. I thought the hot dogs were going to be different because they're in Japan. Oh, they were different, all right. They weren't good at all. So I kind of regret eating that. 
but they did have some good food there. They had some like chicken teriyaki pizza that was actually really delicious. This was actually by the Jaws themed area and you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect that, but it was really good actually, nice and crispy. But again, the topic of food, I could talk about for hours because the food there, it's, for my palate, I love it. It was, it was delicious. And if you guys are new to the channel, you're probably wondering what am I spraying? This is a drying aid. Is it necessary? No. Um, what it does, it provides an extra layer of protection and also a sense of slickness to it, which I mentioned earlier. And there's many different drying aid products out there. I tend to use this because I bought a lot of it and actually I like it on certain applications. For example, I was talking to you guys about A5 Wagyu, Kobe beef. It was, I haven't tried it ever. I've tried Wagyu meatballs and you know, other small gimmicks here in Miami. But when I had legitimate A5 Wagyu beef, it was everything I expected. It was like chewing into that piece of steak because we ordered a ribeye and it was super tender. Like when people describe it melting in your mouth, it, was, it felt like that. It was full of fat, full of texture, full of flavor. And it was a place that we waited for a little bit. And we're actually getting to a little story about that, that, that day. So there was a day, right? Here, here, here's the story. And if you're watching this, it was pretty cool. And the reason why I say that is because I was literally walking around Japan. I was with my wife. We were basically killing some time because we had dinner reservations at that restaurant we we're talking about. We were just walking around Tokyo and I think our reservations were like seven o'clock and it was like five o'clock. So we just, we had another hour just to hang out in that area. I forgot what area it was, but I know we were basically outside the outskirts of this shrine and we just went shopping. We picked up a sweater because when we went, it was really cold. So I needed to pick up another hoodie. So we just left like, I think Uniglo and we're walking around. And all I hear is, hey Ken, nice G80. And I turn to my left, because I hear where that's where the, the sound was coming or the voice was coming from. And I see a guy with a girl. And based on the way he was looking, I feel like he knew me, right? And he did know me. It was actually a subscriber. I was blown away. I could tell you this. Um, his Instagram name is Miggy Patrick. His name is Miguel. <laughs> it was a great time uh, chit-chatting with you. It, I was blown away because I was literally across the world, right? I had nobody, I had no idea that, you know, I'd run into a subscriber. For me, it was a humbling experience, right? I just feel like I put in some work where I'm actually able to reach a good audience that people understand my thought process and they appreciate some of the information that I put out there because I do care about putting high quality videos and I know you guys acknowledge that and I'm really here sweating my <laughs> tush off, washing my car talking about this great country and hopefully this video is coming out high quality because that's what I want to do and produce. And I enjoy this stuff. But again, it was cool talking to you, Miguel. It was nice hearing that you were actually there on vacation with your girlfriend. And um, what was cool too is that Miguel actually has an F80. He has a, I believe, an Alpine white F80. And it's modded, so happy modding to you. Hopefully, uh, if, if you're watching this, you can tell your girlfriend that you need some more mods for Christmas, which is uh, coming up soon. And not soon, but it's coming up, you know. But when I heard that and we were talking, I walked away like, damn, that is absolutely amazing. And you'll see, I, we filmed a little bit, right? We filmed a little bit and you'll see it in the vlog, which still as of right now, I have no idea which direction I'm going to be going with when I edit the video because um, a lot of times when I edit these videos, I really sit and think and you know, at that point when I put these pieces and clips together, I kind of make it somewhere a cohesive video. But you'll see it, I was, my reaction was priceless. So again, it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of courage to walk up to somebody you don't know, Miguel, but I appreciate you walking up and saying what's up. All right, so the floors are not too bad. When I pull the car out, um, I'll show you guys after. 
but as you can see, one solid swipe gets all that water out. Again, later on, I'm going to leave the dehumidifier and leave it on. But is this for everybody? It's definitely not. So I'll show you guys after, but I definitely want to pull up a chair and talk to you guys a little bit some more. All right, so we washed the car and there were some questions I didn't get to ask because I did have a um, poll or I asked you guys, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll be able to happy to answer it. One of the questions was, um, what's the best place to stay for five days? And what I will absolutely agree is that five days is definitely not enough. But I know if five days is your budget with vacation time and all that, um, highly recommend you spend your time in Tokyo, Japan, whether it's in Shinjuku, Ginza. Ginza was one of my favorite spots to stay at. And the reason why is because when you're in Ginza, it's a nice upscale area, very clean, very safe. The whole country is very safe. Not one time I felt that there were some safety issues or walking at night with my wife, I felt any sketchy areas, no, nothing at all. Doesn't mean that there's no crime that happens there. I'm sure there is crime, but Japan is uh, rated one of the most safest countries to go to. Um, I think the other place would be Singapore too, which is a country that I actually did want to go, um, but maybe in the future, we'll see about that. But definitely I would stay um, the five days in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and specifically Shinjuku would be a good area to be in the heart of wherever it's happening, right? Whether it's food, um, shrines, culture, and, and maybe nightlife, if you guys are really wanting to do that, that's a good area to stay too. Um, Ginza was something where we just wanted to feel a little bit more, you know, special. It was nice. So somebody asked, what was the most interesting BMW I saw that was, that caught my eye? Um, that was actually a E90 wagon. I saw it, it was parked on the side of the street. We were actually walking to a 7-Eleven to get up a drink and a snack and seeing it parked up on the street, it was super clean. It was a B3 Alpina wagon and being able to see that preserved nicely. Um, I know we walked back to the train station. I was looking at it like a lot and I filmed a little bit of it for, for uh, Instagram Reel, which I'll, you'll see right now um, that's been playing, but um, it was pretty cool to see. Some of the other highlights that you'll see in that YouTube video is going to be a audible and a visual experience, which is a place called Team Labs in Japan. This is a place where you need to buy your tickets early. You need to book in advance, go to Kluke, purchase your ticket there. And um, when you get there, I'm telling you, it's going to be a great time. And I say in the video, like if you're having a bad day, which we didn't have any bad days in Japan, but if you're in Japan, you're having a bad day, if you go there, just the way the music plays and the visual experience, it just lifts your mood. We were already having a great time. It lifted my mood so much more. Um, but you'll see that vlog would be pretty cool. But just in general, you know, Japan has been everything what I expected, everything more than what I wanted to experience. I can mention it again and again, the culture, the food, the people have been absolutely um, amazing. It has been the best country I've ever visited. It's been the best trip I've ever taken. Um, I would travel there in a heartbeat again, but there's other priorities in my life, so I can't do that now. But if you guys are contemplating about doing this trip or going to this country, or if you're afraid of uh, the language barrier, don't be afraid because even at that point, we were, we knew that we had Google Translate. Google Translate worked up fine. Um, there was times where we would get a menu and they would only be in kanji, which is basically their, their uh, text, right? What you, need to, what you could do is actually take a picture of that menu on Google Lens and, or Google Translate, and you could translate all the menu from whatever your language you speak, right? And it was not a problem at all. So we were able to get by with no problems. And something to add about how helpful and safe the pe and how safe it is is that there was times where my wife and I would travel to I guess a specific shrine where you would have to take the subway system, which is confusing. It's confusing if you are not used to it because it takes some time to get used to. Um, whether it's finding the express train, things like that, but that could be a whole episode which I'm not going to talk about. I don't want to bore you guys. But there was a time where my wife and I had no idea which train to take and we needed to get onto that specific train because we wanted to get to the shrine. Um, we were 
just asking this lady that was pushing a cart full of, you know, produce and stuff. She was getting ready to open her store and she was in the middle of it, right? And we, we asked her, sumi say, which basically means excuse me. And we asked her, how do you get here? You know, we translated how do you get here? And she stopped whatever she was doing. I don't know what it is, but everybody that we stopped and asked directions, whether it's um, a train worker, because that's their job, um, whether it's a random person on the street, a uh, restaurant worker, anybody, they took the time to really speak to us, to really make sure that we got to where we needed to be. Sure, that could happen in any other country, but the level they took it to, this lady literally walked us to the train, like stopped wherever she was doing, she left her groceries or, or um, her produce, whatever she was opening up the store with, left it right there and walked us there. And it was about maybe a half a block in the train station. So um, that's the type of experience you could expect. Um, that's what I experienced. And I could literally sit here and on and on and talk about this amazing country. And I think we probably have to do another one. And maybe we'll bring somebody on a WatchCast series where they've been to Japan. Um, I know Jonathan Towson, right? Um, AKA uh, Mason. Uh, he, he's been to Japan, he's gave me some ideas of what to expect and it is absolutely exactly what um, he suggests it's gonna be like. So, but stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot of vlogs with Japan um, and enjoy the footage. I'm gonna have a fun time editing it and there's so much footage I have backlogged that I haven't put out yet. So, um, it's been very busy for the past couple of months and only 2023 is an even busier. So. I wanna thank everybody for um, tuning into this video. I know that this is not your typical WashCast series, but again, the WashCast series is mainly for me to talk about what's on my mind. It allows me to talk to you guys and also have you guys and girls understand a different aspect of the BMW culture and also my world. So um, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you guys haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next video. All right, as you can see, it's pretty much all dry. There's little streaks here and there, but that's gonna dry later on with time. Um, what I'm gonna be using too is this dehumidifier, and I used it a few times already, and it does a good job of soaking all the moisture. Um, I'll link this down in the description, no relations to them. But again, it is doable.